And, and that's the name of the game right there, guys. Real estate is a fun thing. Once you start learning about it, once you start figuring out what works for you and what works, what doesn't work for you, real estate, if it's something that you can do, I suggest you do it. Hi everyone, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Deanna. I make videos about parenthood, being a business owner, and lifestyle in general. If you are new here, I have a one-year-old daughter. I'm married to my husband, Kwame, for going on a year and a half now. And we buy rental properties. That's one of our small businesses, which isn't so small anymore. It's pretty big now. So today I wanna to just tell you all about how to buy your first real estate investment. And I'm coming to you from my car because we actually just went and saw another property that we're about to buy. So the first thing I want to talk about is funding. How will you fund this deal? How will you get the money to buy your first property? And I always tell everyone to get an FHA loan. If you are in the military, I would suggest getting a VA loan. FHA stands for First Time Homeowners Association. And what's so great about this is that you only have to put at max three and a half percent down look at a property that costs a hundred thousand dollars you only have to put three and a half percent of that down like in cash as opposed to like five percent ten percent even twenty percent sometimes with conventional financing so that's the first thing it's really amazing however the only thing with fha unless you get a 203k loan which is a rehab loan i know this is a lot of mumbo jumbo but the only thing with fha is that you have to get a property that is move-in ready um, I do not know how to go around that. I just know that with FHA, they're looking at the property and if you are able to move into it, is it livable? Are the conditions livable? And if that's a no, then they're probably not gonna allow you to buy that home. Also with FHA, you would have to live in it for a year. I know there's other ways around that. I do not know how to do that. I just know that with FHA, for the first year, they do require you to live there which is all good because you can always rent out the other half and that's what Kwame and I did with our first property we bought a multi-unit property we lived in one and we rented out the rest so we essentially lived there for free but you know when you own a property all of the maintenance requires is on you but as a real estate investor you, that comes with the game you gotta up when it comes to actually looking and buying a home buying a property Kwame and I always look for equity. Equity is our number one thing. And the reason for that is you can use your home or your property as essentially a bank. So for our first property, we bought it for less than market value. We put money into it and we're able to get that money back in cash when we take out a line of credit or home equity line of credit out of the home. So we're always able to get that money back whenever we need to. And now that property is completely paid off. So it's essentially a bank. If we ever need, let's say $50,000 for whatever, we can go back to that home, get the money out. If you know what I'm talking about, leave a comment down below. I feel like sometimes when I'm talking, like if you don't know about real estate and you don't know about this type of thing, sometimes it kind of sounds redundant and it kind of sounds like, what am I even saying? But this is all really good information to have, especially as a first time investor. If you're looking to go into the real estate game, you need to know what equity means, what FHAs are, what it means to actually put work into a home. And that's what Kwame and I do. For this particular property that we just went to look at, it's so great because it's a multi-unit property. It falls under FHA. So if we did want to use another FHA loan to buy it, we could, because like I said, we paid off our first FHA loan. So we're able to go back and use it again. But this property itself is so amazing because it has two homes on it. And FHA will allow you to buy up into four units in a home, or, you know, this property has two separate homes for the price of one. So what's great about that equity is that you can always take it to the city and split it down the middle. So we're getting two houses. It has two backyards, two driveways, everything. It's beautiful. So we split it down the middle and you know what that means? Instant equity. Cause that house can give us money. It's just mm, really great. However, however, that house, the second house, needs a lot of work one house is already rented out by a tenant the other house needs a lot of work so what i'm going to show you is 
you know, the type of work that it needs. Are the walls good? Are the floors good? Do you need new siding? This home needs a complete reno. Like we're gonna have to take all the walls down. It's a big project that we're actually looking forward to it because we know exactly how much equity we can get out of this home. So it's, it's an amazing deal after we've done the numbers. Um, when you're looking for your first home, you may not wanna get such a big project. You may want to find things that already has electrical done, already has the plumbing done, already has HVAC and it just has the walls that don't have holes in it and aren't quite as dirty. So those are things that you would look into because when you're opening up walls and you're starting to rehab, you never know what's behind the walls. You don't know how extensive the work is until you actually start doing it. That's why they always call it an estimate. My number two rule is to find a home that you are comfortable doing the work with. FHA honestly won't really allow you to do too much of work unless you get the 203k loan, which is a rehab loan. Another but thing you want to look for in your first rental property or your first inve investment property is location. Listen, not everywhere is a renter's location. Sometimes, if and it's so easy to look at this, you can go right over to like Trilla or Trula. You scroll down and they'll tell you like how many renters are in that area is it is it like a 60 percent owner area or a 60 percent renter area you want to look for an area that has a lot of renters you are familiar with the area because you live there and you probably rent and you know that most people rent that's where you want to invest you don't want to invest in a neighborhood that that everybody owns people have had those homes for years and years pass it down to their families you know their grandma owned it whatever you don't want to live there you, you don't want to invest there because it's going to be harder to find somebody to, to move in and even if it's not maybe you already have a renter lined up before you buy the house I mm -mm. <laughs> but for the most part you want to look at areas that are ideal for renters another thing is you want to look at appreciation. How is your house going to appreciate? Is the city that you're buying in, is it a growing city or is it very stagnant? Is it a small town? You don't know. things Because if you're buying in an area where the city is building and it's appreciating, you could buy that house for $100,000 and in five years that house is now worth $200,000. Look at that. So you, sat, you sat there, you kept your house and it appreciated. And that's what you want, appreciating assets appreciating cash flowing assets. Okay, I hope that this gave you some ideas and it helped you out. Leave your comments down below. I will answer all your comments with Kwame because he is really great at all real estate, anything. Right now he's filling up our vending machine so you get me. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave your comments down below, questions, everything. Don't forget to subscribe, get our ebook, our uh, vending machine ebook, and we'll see you in our next video, guys.